test the claim. It's not, it's, not some, it's not some ambiguous statement. It could be, maybe it's the liberals, maybe it's the progressive, maybe it's the right wing, maybe it's the Zionists, it's the Jews. And so in contrast, the Israelis are saying the opposite. The Israelis are calling for coexistence and peace. And so you respond, respond now. Can I respond yes. now? Okay. First off, you said, for example, this guy who said, uh, go and attack Jews. I think the very next day he took it back and he said, our, our struggle was, is with the occupation. Even the times... That's quite a misspeak. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> cut the knives, hurt the throats of the Jews. I made a mistake. I didn't mean cut the throats of the Jews. I mean, give them a hug. Sorry. Very mature of you. Very mature of you. You're, you're seriously taking Let that serious? Let me finish. Let me finish. He took it back. Now... <laughs> can I finish without... You can. You can. can we be grown-ups here? I, to be honest, I find it quite difficult to be grown up when you can, are... Can we be grown ups? Um, okay. I'm trying. Now, contrast that. You, In fact, I will say he didn't take it back. Even though the Times of Israel said he did take it back. He, will not, he didn't take it back. Let's assume that for a moment, okay? Compare that to a 95-year-old reservist from the IDF going back to his, going to Israelis and telling them, kill the Arabs. If you have an Arab neighbor, don't wait for them. Kill them. Kill their children. Kill, destroy their villages. Now I ask you. I ask you. When that state, when that uh, Hamas member made that statement to the Palestinians, how many Palestinians? He said 7 million Palestinians. How many of those 7 million Palestinians had the ability to drive a tank at that time? Zero. How many of them were able to call in airstrikes? Zero. How many of them were able to have a one-ton bomb drop on an area, an area they designate? Zero. By contrast, that IDF reservist told a people of angry, willing, and armed soldiers to go and kill Arabs. There's a vast difference. There's a huge difference. One is a random 95-year-old man. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. could be completely senile. The other is literally a member of the government of Gaza. There's a you. You have. It won't surprise you. There are Jews that are racist, just like there are Muslims that are racist. The difference is yours is the elected, not yours, but the one you're defending is the done. elected government. Oh, sorry, I'm not done. I have not finished, by the way. That's all, okay, finished. I thought you were, sorry. It's not just some random guy. The ID I believe in order for you to be there, you know, the IDF has to, to let you in. They let him in as a motivational speaker. He was speaking to people that are about to go and commit genocide. That's one. Two, this is something, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, but if you look at the reports in, for example, Operation Castlet, there have been graffiti on the wall of the houses that says, death to Arabs. Kill all Arabs. One down, 999,000 left to go. So again, the Israelis, this IDF, they're against Arabs. They so, want to kill. So, so let me finish. Okay. They have chance. Death to Arabs. A good Arab is a bad Arab. Yeah. What happened to that? Not a bad Arab. Yeah, no, no. So a good I, Arab is a, so, a dead so, Arab. Just, can I, very quick, just what a, you're saying there. I, I'm not arguing with any of that. There are Israelis. I've, I've heard the chat myself. Mavet Aravim. It's a horrible statement. No, and it breaks my heart when I hear this. Now, when it comes to the genocidal statements, Mr. Cohen, we have, I'm, I'm sure you've read the, uh, the South Africa report. Have you read it? Yes, yes, yes. Have you read the genocidal statement? Made by a million people, by the prime minister, by the defense minister, by this guy, by Smotrich, by which, some which, random which guy. Statements? All of them. No, but which, which of the statements are you talking about? I have told, for example, I have told my the troops Amalek. to release uh, the, uh, Yoav Gant. He said, uh, also Malik. He said, I have told uh, our troops that we have released our, all constraints Yes, that, that means all constraints. No, it, it, this is human a, animals. This is siege, such a, this Amalek, is, infants. So this is such a butchering. It's basically he's saying where well, the Israel has a very, very strict code of conduct when it's in a military campaign. If you are taking a shot that is going to kill someone, you have to phone it into a senior, your command, and get permission to shoot. He's saying because this is an unprecedented urban conflict. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that luxury of being able to check in with each shot because we are firing. Fight, you've seen the, you've seen the RPGs that Hamas are firing and taking out tanks, etc. You don't have the luxury of being able. Oh, guys, there's a guy with an RPG. Can we take the shot? Of course not. That's what he's saying. A Malik. A Malik is just a term in Judaism, in the Jewish tradition, which we use to describe the people that are seeking the genociders. Jews. I've been called a Malik many times by Naturei Carter. It doesn't mean they want to see me genocided and my entire family. It's just in the same way that Nazi is used in the West, Nazi is used for anybody a Westerner doesn't like. And Malik is used in the same way when by the Jewish people to describe anyone as the extreme, um, rising up to, um, to, 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 to genocide us. 
as for the human animals, it's so clear in every single one of those quotes, they're talking about Hamas. And anyone that rapes and murders is a is is lower than an animal in my in, by my estimation. If I you rape you. and murder the elderly, now they're not saying that the Palestinian people are these things, which is why they've gone to such lengths. And I'm going to list those lengths for the camera. I know you know this. So before Israel responded in October the seventh and sent troops in, they made they dropped millions of leaflets from the sky, giving away their advantage, their military advantage, saying there's going to be a ground incursion. They dropped millions of leaflets. They placed millions of pre-recorded phone calls warning people when the building was going to get struck. You can go on the BBC and read articles about Palestinians. Palestinians talking about the phone calls they received. There was an article on the BBC about a Palestinian doctor who went from building apartment to apartment in his building block telling his neighbours to get out and begging the person from the Israeli um, person he was communicating with on the phone for more time so he could get everyone out. These are not the actions of a nation that's trying to genocide civilians. Not only did they make 50,000 of these live calls, they will allowed in hundreds of thousands of tons of aid. They established humanitarian corridors by which the overwhelming majority of Palestinians that were in the north were able to escape and move into the south. They then created maps and safe zones and told and gave away the advantage by telling Palestinians where they are going to be attacking next because Hamas have fortified underneath, underneath the Palestinian infrastructure. The reason Israel is in this area is because Hamas has spent 17 years fortifying Gaza, tunneling under the city, creating half 500 kilometers of tunnels, which is more tunnels than the London underground. More tunnels than the London underground they put under Gaza City, under Gaza City. And they've done that and then waged a, launched a war, which everybody knew how Israel is going to respond to coming in and murdering 1,300 um, Israelis, including over half of whom are just innocent civilians. Um, everyone, Hamas knew what the response would be, yet they did it because they wanted the war and they want to maximize civilian casualties because every dead Palestinian is a PR victory for Hamas. And every dead, every dead Israeli civilian is a military victory for them. So they want to maximize civilians on both counts because it's in their interest. And you can listen to their leaders saying this in their own words all over the internet. In contrast, Israel is trying to minimize civilians on both counts. Now, tragically, because of the kind of conflict this is, Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, have been killed. The difference between you and me is I blame Hamas for those and you blame Israel. Are you done? Are you done? I, I, I just spoke for a long time and he was very patient. And he did, to done? his credit, did not interrupt once, which is... <laughs> Is that, that much? <laughs> Are you done? Yes, I am. Okay, President of Israel said it's a whole nation out there that is responsible. Prime Minister of Israel referred again, to, I'm reading from this African application, referred again to Amalek in the letter sent on, on 3 November 2023 to Israeli soldiers and officers. The text reads as part, but kill alike men and women, infants and sucklings. Yeah, of course, he only said that because Hamas doesn't like the Jews. That's why he said that. Kill, kill infants. 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 Not say that. But but kill alike. Where is it? That's quoting the, the Tanakh. Amalek. Now go. Now now go. Attack Amalek and prescribe all things precise to him. Spare no one, but kill alike men and women, infants and sucklings, oxen and sheep, camels and asses. President. We talked about the president of uh, this guy. Now he said when when they That's talk about. Let me finish. Tanakh, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> so. He said when they talk about these statements, it's only Hamas. Yeah, of course, because when, when Yoav Gallant imposed a siege on Gaza, that siege only affected Hamas. Not the point 2.3 million Palestinians, only Hamas. Obviously, because if you're targeting Hamas, you must starve 2.3 million people to death. That's what you need to do. Or at least place them on a diet. This guy, where is his uh, national security? As you have, uh, as your minister for national security, it's Marvin Gavir. He said, to be clear, when we say, that Hamas should be destroyed will also mean those who celebrate, those who support, and those who hand out candy. They're all terrorists. Then they should be destroyed. The Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure. What did he say? Yeah, on 12. He said, humanitarian. Uh, Allah, man, Let me Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Destroy wait, Hamas. wait. Humani Hamas. Let me. Humanitarian aid to Gaza? No electricity. What? What? What did he say? Allahumma what? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to hold back or? Yeah, that's right. I'll hold back, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, to strike, may, may Allah up. strangle the Jews. Yakbah, Yarda'i. Lahda, wait, wait. Yahoo, you speak Arabic? Yarda'i or Yaktul? I know. Do you mean by Yarda'i or Yaktul? Like to stop or to kill? Okay. Okay. So he said anyway, Yaktul, which is like to okay. put a break. This is the Minister of Energy Infrastructure. Humanitarian aid to Gaza. No electricity switch will be turned on. No water hydrant will be opened. And no fuel truck will enter until the Israeli abductees are returned home. Humanitarianism for humanitarianism. And no one will preach us morality. Okay. He's, this guy, uh, Minister of Finance, he said... We need, we, need a deal, we need to deal a blow that hasn't been seen in 50 years and take down Gaza. Gaza. Not Hamas. Not Hamas human animals, Gaza. This guy, I mean, this, this, I, th I think you and I can both agree. The Israeli minister of heritage, he's a moron. So he said we should nuke them. That's what I'm so, specifically yeah. referring to. Uh, minister of agriculture, we're actually ro now rolling out the Gaza Nakba. Okay, the WD speaker of the Knesset member of the Foreign Affairs and Security Co Committee. He said, now we all have one common goal. Erase the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. Those who are unable will be replaced. Sounds very evolutionary to me. Replace them. Similar statements, this guy, hold on. I'm not, I mean, some guy actually said we need to, we need to create a human, humanitarian crisis in Gaza. We need to turn Gaza into a place where no human can survive, no human can live. Those are statements consistently made against the Palestinians of Gaza. They didn't say Hamas. They didn't say we should only kill Hamas. That's one. Two, two, when you look at how they're acting, if you read, again, if you read the human rights reports, you will know that when Israel says we're giving leaflets, that's all propaganda. Literally propaganda. Because I can list you. In fact, just yesterday, I went through the Goldstone report again. And I listed some of the names that Israel killed. For example, they, they, uh, they dropped a white phosphor shell on a house, decapitating two people instantly. They multiple. T they shot people for no reason. They deliberately target civilians. Can they I make one request? Them. We stay with you can, rather than going back to Can we stay with the current conflict? Just because. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm using I'm using the present, the past to say that this is how they behave. As for the regulations that he said, well, they have to make a phone call and the constraints. He said we 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 have released all constraints. He didn't say all technicalities, all bureaucracy. No, no, he said all constraints. And this thing about you have to make a phone call. Well, that's not. Have you seen? Just a genuine question. Are you keeping up with the crimes that Israel's committing? So I don't believe Israel is committing crimes. So this is where we... I don't, Zero! So I, there will be individuals who've committed crimes. I don't believe Israel as a state is committing crimes. In a war, people do horrible things. It doesn't matter who's waging the war, whether it's Palestinians, whether it's Israelis, whether so it's Americans. So you don't believe committing crimes? So I believe, I, believe all, I believe in all wars because wars are horrible. Wars of yeah, bloody, I know. I'm not. I'm not uh, saying they're good. I'm, not I'm, saying saying they're Israel, I'm saying Israel is a nation. I don't believe is committing crimes. Or the IDF. I did. Well, it's, uh, that's the army of the nation. So yeah. Yeah. So if if you look, if you look at the pres, the, the if you look at the history of the IDF and how they behave, you will know that they do target civilians. So, so, do, do, they do, okay. Yeah. Okay, go no, ahead. No, please, no, no, please, please, please. Okay. Yeah. Sure. They do humiliate civilians. I can give you countless testimonies from prisoners. Not in a time of war, in a time of peace, and in a time of war. How they treat the Palestinians, how they humiliate them, how they torture them. Rape reports have been have come out against against the Israelis. In fact, I'll give you a story. This is a fun story. The uh, the United States of the U.S. has something called the Department of State. The head of the Department of State, I think his name was Paul, Jake Paul, something like that, Josh Paul. He said we were vetting Israel for a human rights process because they want to they want to sell them arms. At some point. A human rights organization called is, uh, Defense for Children International Palestine brought our attention to a case of a 13-year-old boy getting raped in prison. What did Israel do? They went in the next day, confiscated all the, uh, the, the computers, and they, they declared the human rights organization a terrorist organization. That's how Israel treats the Palestinians. That's how the IDF, again, read the, whole, read the Goldstone Report. Read about Operation Protective Edge. Read about the Great March of Return protest, and you will see that Israel doesn't care about the Palestinian life. May I ask you one question? Yeah, go ahead. Very you one state, That's what time it is. I've got one. to go. I've got to go into short. Okay, one state. No, what time is it? What time is it? That's my phone. Okay, I'm going to have to go in 20 minutes. Just I've got a meeting at 8 30. Yeah, that's no. your one state. One state. That's the only solution. Israel will not allow it to state. Israel never wanted to state. It's one state. Now, I have a lot more to say. I have. A, 
Uh, okay, I have a lot more to say about the genocide, like how as you will disagree with but I, I've spoken so about So, uh, just to respond very briefly, I don't think we need uh, to... I think what's more... So, you have to contextualize some of those statements, and some of those statements are abhorrent. But what, you, what it was said on the back of was the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. Now, because of the way Israeli politics functions, they were the most right-wing element that any Israeli government ever had. And these are fringe guys. So someone like Ben Gavir is an example. Yeah. Ben Gavir has less retweets than I know me. no one likes him. <laughs> yeah, has less retweets than I do on Twitter. <laughs> but he's in government because it, he was needed to form a coalition so Netanyahu could um, retain or become, say, remain the prime minister or become the prime minister. Um, so as a consequence of the current government, the makeup of the current government, you have people making statements on the back of the, the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust um, that uh, their voices are amplified and carried far further than they ordinarily would do. And some of them are ministers and some of them hold positions in government. Um, however, what's more important is today, Israel is governed by a unity government in terms of the, the war. You mean There's war unity, cabinet? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's a unity, it's a unity guy. And the, the cabinet... Explain what you mean by unity. So there's, okay, just for this benefit, you have people who were traditionally in opposition politically, like Tories and Conservatives, and Democrats and Republicans, sitting together and working together in unity for the national effort, which is a war. It happens there when most nations go to war, there's a unity government form. Um, now, what's more important is Israel's actions, not the individual speakings of soldiers. And I, I completely free myself from it, but don't question and don't disagree with your, your, your claims that there is racist graffiti and there are racist chants and there are racist Israelis because there are racists in every society. And surprise, surprise, if you're having an ethno-religious war, many of those racists will try and participate in that conflict. It will happen in any war. And unfortunately, the individuals will be put in positions where they can do things which I would consider evil, you would consider evil, and they will be happening on... I think he has a question. So, so let, let, me, let me just finish up with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's more important is action. And the actions of the Israeli government is to minimize civilian casualties. A million Palestinians existed in the north before the 7th of October. In the entire conflict, tragically, tragically, 30,000 people have been killed. <coughs> At least a third of them, according to Israel's, re Israel's reckoning, which you disagree with, and that's fine, but according to Israel, at least a third of them are Palestinians that are Hamas or other militant factions. And now, if... So let's, let's just say, for, for argument's sake, there's 20... To take Hamas's number and... Israel's number, there are 20,000 tragically dead civilians who've been caught, caught up in this conflict, which is actually a low, for an urban conflict, that's a, it's a low ratio. Not that it makes it, not that it, it makes it any better. 20,000 dead people is a tragedy by any reckoning, but there's 20,000 dead out of a million people that existed in the north. Now, if you look at the level of bombing that's taken place, like, if you look at any of the satellite imagery, you can see the damage that's been done to buildings. There should be hundreds of thousands, if not a million, like, literally, uh, uh, in theory, there should be a million dead Palestinians. But we don't. We have 20,000 civilians. And the reason for that is Israel, in action, is trying to minimize civilian casualties. And that's my main point. My main point isn't that every single Israeli is an angel and there's no such thing as a racist Israeli and that the Israeli state is... Uh, what I'm saying is very simple. Israel is trying to minimize civilian casualties when Hamas are engaging Israel from civilian areas. Hamas are engaging Israel from the safe zones. Hamas are engaging Israel from densely populated areas. And it's truly to Israel's credit that the death toll is as low as it is. And it sounds crazy because so many people have tragically been killed. But that number would be so much higher when compared to any other nation that's fighting. Whether it's an Arab nation like Syria or Iraq, or whether it's a Western nation like the Ukrainians and like the Russians, or the allies in Dresden, like the death toll is low in comparison. And I hate to play this game because every innocent life, it, if you are the mother 
of a dead child. You don't care about ratios. You don't care about if other nations are worse. You don't care if Israel has taken precautions to minimize civilian casualties because your child has died. And that is a tragedy. And no, the only place we disagree is to do with who is ultimately at fault. And I don't think we'll find common ground on that because we've done this argument a couple of times. But you've made notes, so you've got notes, so I'll let you okay. your response. I'll say because last time, yes. Um, if you guys could agree that there are rogue bad actors on both sides. I think we would agree to I that, think yeah. I have agreed on yeah. that. I think that can help clarify a lot of stuff. It'll create better communication. Because okay. a lot of the examples which you keep on both sides can be bad actors. <laughs> <laughs> My battery's going to die any minute. The establishment of either necessarily have as the bridge road. Okay. It's very easy to quote. Very I'll very respond. Easy. Last time, you gave me the last word, so I'm going to give you the last word now. So I'm going to respond, then you respond, then we're going to go. Yeah. Uh, quickly touch on some things. Number one, Hamas numbers. He keeps talking about Hamas numbers. Well, Hamas numbers are reliable. The, the Palestinian Health Ministry numbers have accurate numbers. For example, just some evidence. In 2008, and 2000, uh, in Castled, which is 2008-2009, and Protective Edge, the numbers of the, uh, the Health Ministry of Gaza almost match the numbers of, of the Israeli, uh, of the IDF. So there's that. Second, Ynet, which is yet to not net, published an article in which they said, "Did I mispronounce? Did I butcher?" No, no. I just I, I love debating you because you are so much more fun to debate than other people because you actually read. Next, next time I will, yeah, I will yeah, shout, no, shout no, at no, you. Okay, no, no. I'll yell at you. Okay, <laughs> can you curse me now and then? Yeah, I'll do that off camera. Off camera. Okay. So they wrote an article in which they said the the Israeli Mossad uses the numbers of the, the Palestinian Health Ministry internally, so it is accurate. The Lancer, or the Lancet, they published a, a report saying no evidence of inflated mortality rates or mortality numbers within the, the, the Gaza Health Ministry uh, uh, figures. Now, when it comes to Israel and uh, to, to how many of them are terrorists. Now, here's what I did. I went back to Cast Lead and uh, Protective Ed because those are the two the ground invasions. And Cast Lead, human rights organization, placed the, the ratio of civilians to combatants at, tw sorry, they said the, the percentage of combatants killed are only 23%. That's the maximum, 23% of all the people killed, who are, uh, of all the people killed. Israel, the IDF, placed the percentage of combatants at 60%. That's three times more. Let me finish. In Protective Edge, it was, it was similar. In Protective Edge, it was similar. Uh, Israel placed the idea, the percentage of IDF, com uh, sorry, uh, the IDF placed the percentage of combatants at 56%. And human rights organizations at 68%. So they were close. Now, when it comes to, to Israel declaring which is a terrorist and which is not, I don't believe them. Not because I think they have lied, but because I don't have enough evidence to believe them. I have only, I only have two instances. One instance of them exaggerating the numbers and one instance of them giving fairly accurate numbers. So I don't trust them. I don't believe them in that sense. Second, minimize civilian. Actually, I'll make that last one. Individual making statements. Yusuf. Just as you create excuses for Israel when they make these vile, abhorrent statements, make the same excuses for Hamas or don't make them at all. You said it's a unity government, which means normally it's an opposition. No, we're saying this is the complete representation of the Israeli community because we don't only have one party. It's not like, it's like government, Republicans, Democrats, I, I don't know about the here, labor and all that. It's a unity. So it represents everyone and they're making all these abhorrent statements. And they're explicit. It's not a, It's not about the Hamas. Some statements are, for example, the Yoav Gallant was like, we will eliminate everything, we will kill Hamas, Gaza will not come. Yes, in that statement, he did specify Hamas. Other statements, they don't specify Hamas. Gaza, we must raise Gaza, raise it to the ground, create an environment.